Yo, Dagum. Yo. Yes, it's uh, it's out, eh? Get in there. I've seen some streams of some folks playing pre-release. Like Soda Poppin was playing yesterday. Soda Poppin. Ugh, and IGN gave it a nine. We're jacked. We're definitely excited, that's for sure. Um, I personally didn't play a huge, huge role in this project. I, uh, I mean, with Power Up Audio in general, I think I mentioned before, but how we kind of operate is um, we're a team of five, yes. And across our various projects, like one person kind of takes point on a game and they kind of own it. And it lives, like all the information lives in their head. <laughs> and then the rest of the team kind of rolls in to support, um, you know, where, where needed. And it often is definitely needed. So yeah, like right now I'm kind of, I'm owning um, Industries of Titan and Tunic, for instance. But I'm doing plenty of support work on things like Below Zero and things like uh, Dark Ascension 2 or whatever we're working on. So, yeah, I mean, I got to give props to the rest of the team. <laughs> I think basically everyone on the team has done more work on this particular project than I have personally. But, uh, you know, it's always a team effort over here. So um, I'm really, really super proud of the team. And actually, there was a there was a freaking shout out in the in the article in the review for IGN for uh, for sound, which never happens, right? Like sound doesn't get mentioned in reviews. Us sound designers want our hero moments. We want to win our awards, <laughs> but no one, no one pays attention to sound, do they? No one. Here we go. Look at this. The sound design and music that we're listening to right now are also just as awesome as ever. The icy oppressive yet beckoning feeling of the Arctic Sea really comes alive when you can hear the distant calls of massive oceanic life forms and the bubbling of your rebreather through the shimmering gloom. I got to the point that I could close my eyes. Who does that? Who closes their eyes while they're listening to stuff? We do. And make a rough mental map of what kind of creatures were around, including their relative position and distance, which is not only useful, but pretty damn impressive that it's possible at all in such a huge 3D environment. Hey, go the rest of my team. Hey. <laughs> Good job, guys. All right. Well, welcome on in, everyone. I, I saw someone say a packed house. Indeed. This is uh, excellent early showing. Thanks, everyone, for rolling in. Um, and certainly, we, yeah. Plenty of reason to. <laughs> we have some great guests today. Gonna be good. Uh, but first, Turi, the first. Hey, all. What up, Turi makes music. Yo, Brittany, thank you. Happy birthday. Yes, it is indeed. This is a birthday stream for me. Um, I'm taking most of today and tomorrow off, actually, for my birthday. And uh, but this is honestly like this stream I look forward to every time we're doing it. So this is not. This isn't work. <laughs> this isn't really work, is it? This is hanging out. Uh, official W me. You've been here before, right? I think so. I recall this name. And J Spear Sound made it for the first time for one of these. What up? Welcome on in. Shouts to the EU friendly time. Yeah, it makes a big difference for for all you pals over there. Yeah. Yeah. Um. Yeah, happy to accommodate. Okay, we got Benny Maru. What up? Ezekiel, yo, yeah, and thank you for the for the ongoing support, Dag. I saw that tweety, or I saw it, that tweet saying that you look at our portfolio of games and just buy our stuff if we've worked on it. <laughs> so appreciate that. Super kind. Thanks a lot. And uh, first time watching there from from the start live, Keisha, Kesha Sidov, Kesha Sidov, Keisha, Kesha. I'm gonna call you Kesha. Tell me if not, if I'm saying your name wrong. What up, Ashton, Eric? Yo, D'Agostino. What up? Natasha, good morning. Chris, Shapple Juice, what up? <laughs> hey, Steven. I saw you uh, liking some tweets there. Good to see you. Megan Fraser, yo. Are you the Megan Fraser I know in Vancouver? 
do you work in art or games? Maybe not. <laughs> there is a Megan Fraser working in mobile games in, in Vancouver. I guess you were a different person. All right, fair enough. Uh, okay, okay, good. What else we got? Oh snap, it's Sean. Yo. That's a new name, I think, right? Oh snap, it's Sean. Welcome on in. Santa Ben? Okay. Benedict. Alex, good to see ya. There's, there he is, Jeremy Scott Olson. Here we go. Jeremy, welcome. Let's do some zoom in here before we get back to this. Uh, yeah, I saw your brave tweet. Don't worry, we're just hanging out here. It's all positive, don't worry. A horse who can drive, what up? Skew Nick, yo. Jordan Payne. Uh, Jordan, I guess it's public now, right? Jordan is um, Real Talk alumni. So to speak, is that like a generous word to use? Probably alumni. J Jordan was once on the show, I'll put it that way. And uh, Jordan just got hired at Ninja Theory. So, yo, good stuff. Good on you. Jacked. It's always a thrill to hear folks we've uh, had on this show are now, are now gainfully employed. It's excellent. Sergio. Hi, everyone. Just to thank you guys for the show and for the healthy environment. Of course. Cheers. Happy to have you here for it. Much love from Audio QA. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's a, that's a very important place to be. Thank you. And Mate, yo. There's a lot of chat to scroll here. Jeez, so many people in here. She Tao Music. Is it She? I assume it's She, right? Welcome. Feral! Good to see you as well. Been a little while, I think, right? Teeny Thanos. That's a solid handle. Very nice. <laughs> Teeny Thanos. Is uh is Jack Campbell here yet, I wonder? Seven Lands, yo. I haven't seen you for a while too, Seven Lands. It's been a while. Excellent. April Fool's Child. First time actually setting an alarm for this show. Hey, well, thank you for making that effort. Appreciate that. Good to have you. Matt Galt. Also, first time catching one live. A lot of first timers here. Excellent. Disco Eternal. Yo! What up? A lot of good names in this chat. Holy, I can't believe how many good names are in this chat today. It's nuts. Wizrobe. Valentin, you're back. Good to see you. Uh, oh, by the way, Valentin, I think that your I think your highlight may have been eaten by Twitch, but I did download it, so it'll be on YouTube at some time in the near future when I have time to catch up there. So if you want to rewatch or something, don't worry, it's not it's not gone forever. We got it. Uh, okay, I think that's basically it. Jeez, I can't, Evan. First time here too. What up, B and J J? Yo. <laughs> okay, yeah. So. Um, yes, we have some wonderful dulcet tones of Ben Prunty playing right now. If you missed that, Subnautica Below Zero, a game that, you know, we had the pleasure of being involved with alongside Ben. We've worked with Ben a few times now. Uh, Ben, you might know Ben's work from, um, Faster Than Light, you know, FTL. And we worked with them for the kind of follow-up, from the same studio at least, Into the Breach. And, uh, we also worked with them on a game called Star Crawlers some time ago. So he's been, yeah, we've been crossing paths plenty in the past years. He's something of an indie, an indie game music beast. Look at this, this album. It's long. We can, it just keeps going. <laughs> we can't listen to the whole thing. I'll put it in the chat too if you want to just uh, put that aside and um, have a listen. Give him some cash later on. Up to you. There you go. Now you got it. Uh, yes, yeah, so today we have two wonderful guest hosts joining us. Um, it's been kind of in the works for a little while. Oftentimes with these things, there's a bit of a, of runway needed to deal with, um, you know, permissions and so forth, getting all that stuff in, in, in line, and even simply just having time. Because, yes, it's not a default to assume that people have time to throw 90 minutes at a stream on a Thursday <laughs> it's like in the middle of the work week. So yeah, every time we have some guests on the show who are gracious enough to join us, it's always, always excellent. So 
Uh, today we have Kristen Quinn and Brian Higa. Uh, I actually, I'd, I'd met Brian Higa many years ago, many years ago. I, we, he and I kind of came to the conclusion that we were actually in the same gang audio demo derby in 2012. So yeah, that's going back a long time. We actually, uh, a, a while back, we had Jacqueline Shoemate on as a guest host, like a, some time ago, maybe two years ago or something. It was a long time. And Jacqueline was also in that same demo derby. And Brian was like, were you in that same one? It was, it was me and Jacqueline. I was like, that was, yeah, that was me too. <laughs> so crazy. And yeah, since then, Brian's been all around uh, the industry. I have some credits here. So worked on Fable the Journey for Connect. Um, I hadn't personally heard of that one, but I looked into it after our our uh, kind of test call and such. And I actually watched a lot of the Let's Play. <laughs> Seems like a lot of horse, a lot, a lot of horse in that game. Um, I saw some YouTube comment that was like, "This game would have been good if there was less horse." And it, the immediate follow up was like, "I love too much horses in this game." <laughs> it's like I love this game as a, as a kid because I could take care of a horse. So yeah, different different strokes, I guess. Um, also, Sunset Overdrive, uh, League of Legends. Um, we kind of, I was joking that he designed Pike for League of Legends. I believe the voice design and the abilities. And now for Ruined King that we're doing with Riot Forge and Airship Syndicate, uh, Joey, or sorry, maybe Craig on our team. I think both of them are, uh, are doing Pike's work also. So a lot, even, even some more crossover yet with our, with our crews. Uh, as well, so Teamfight Tactics and um, more recently, I assume, Demon Souls. And Kristen Quinn! I actually have, I had not met before, and I'm thrilled to now because just mentioning it on Twitter, it seems that all these people come out of the woodwork are like, oh my God, I love these people so much. And I guess it's just, a, it's just like a, a symptom of, not symptom, but kind of just, it's just classic of the, like the indie space and the AAA space is there's often just not, there's not a lot of, lot, lot of like opportunity to hang out in the same rooms together. So you just end up not meeting a lot of uh, people that you really, Wish you would have met earlier, <laughs> but anyway, Kristen Quinn is audio director at uh, at Polyarch, who are also some some pals of ours down in uh, down stateside, and uh, but she's been around for a while, and it's yeah. So as far as credits go, Fable two and three, um, Condemned one and two, Sunset Overdrive also, uh, Legends of Runeterra. Uh, you might see some kind of crossover as far as Brian and and Kristen are concerned here, and also, uh, Kristen was mentioning this. This may this may date them a bit, but also Fear. Do you recall that game? We have any Fear fans in the audience? Fear was that's going back a long time. <laughs> it's, it's a solid game though. It's solid. I recall that. Uh, I recall reading like some PC gamer articles on Fear and how crazy it was, how effective it was. At, uh, well, making you fearful, I guess. <laughs> I recall there was like, I never played it myself because I was too much of a scaredy cat, but I, I did watch my brother play a little bit, you know, like through, through kind of, a, you know, a, a small parted <laughs> hand between the fingers. And I recall there was one moment where there was like a shadow cast on the wall and then he whipped around to see what it was and there was nothing there. And I was like, okay, I'm out. I can't. I can't watch this anymore. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah, it's been a while. Jeez. Um, oh, I totally, I just failed to mention. So, of course, Brian Higa is currently senior sound designer at PlayStation Studios. So there you go. We have some two excellent guest hosts joining us today. So I guess I'll, without further ado, I will just go ahead and pause you, and let's get going with. Oh, and both, <laughs> yes, both Kristen and Brian. Happy birthday in Discord. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Uh, okay, let's do. Let's get going here. Okay, and how are we looking? Hello? Yo, okay, give me a quick second. I think we have this. There we go. Okay, you are now on the stream. Excellent. Thank you for joining us. What up? Hey, what's up? I see you donned your, your more metal shirt today Brian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and thank you for uh, for probably changing the background too it was black in our test call you'd be like a floating head yeah. if you had the same background i lightened it up a little bit just a tad. <laughs> very nice uh kristen thank you as well for joining us thanks so much yeah thanks for having me oh cheers um let me just make sure i'm all lined up here i think i'm still okay good 
So, uh, I've already done a pretty extensive intro on you both. Um, so, for everyone joining us right now who might not be super familiar with the stream, this is Real Talk. We're taking a look at some game audio demo materials from some folks who are perhaps up-and-comers looking to get some more traction in uh, whatever corner of the industry they're aiming for. And we're looking to give them some constructive feedback. You know, because often when you apply at some studio, just as a, you know, with your typical job, job application, you might uh, get a general like, oh, sorry, like not this time. Or perhaps you may not hear back at all. That's also relatively common. And you might not know why. Whereas with us, like, you're not really applying to our companies right now. So we're happy to give you plenty of feedback. And hopefully in the interest of helping you increase your odds of landing that gig you're looking for. So we're looking at a few things here. We're looking for presentation, material selection, content quality, and distinction. Oh, lost you. There we go. And for presentation, it's going to be the web design kind of just generally if things are, if the important stuff is kind of shoved in our face, if there's too much information or perhaps not enough, um, things like is there a bio, things like just general flow and navigation that stuff. And for the demo reel itself, we're looking at, yeah, again, the flow and the length and things like titling and just, you know, does it does it transition smoothly? Just like everything, everything that's not audio, basically. And for material selection, we're looking at what pieces these people may have selected for their demo reel, for their show reel or for their portfolio and what those pieces might suggest to someone coming in you know, perhaps blind, having never seen their work before, what it may suggest about their past work history, their current skill sets, and maybe most importantly, their future ambitions. And next up, content quality. Just is it good? Just is it uh, hitting that that bar of the industry standard of awesome? And if there's room to improve, we'll certainly let you know what our opinion is. And finally, distinction. Are you standing out in some positive way? As there are a lot of people vying for those same gigs, uh, I don't know if this is something that either of you could share, but I know I've heard from other people in the AAA space when there is a, you know, a, a job posting for a junior role, they might get hundreds of applications. I know Isaac Chan at Riot uh, some, some couple of years back was saying that there was like 800 applications one time for a junior position. So I see you both smiling and nodding. So it seems like you're in agreement <laughs> with this idea. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, it's pretty damn important to stand out in some way, and that might not even mean you're hired this time, but then just simply next time, if you apply again, you may just, you know, have that leg up. They go, oh, geez, yeah, I recall, I recall Jack last time, and oh, man, they've made some serious strides. That's That looks very good. So, anyways, let's jump back over to the chat, and uh, before we get started, I do want to just throw it over to Brian and Kristen here. So, given that the show is all about you know everyone trying to find their own place in the industry and such it can be very helpful to remind ourselves that everyone started somewhere so if you'd be so kind uh, perhaps Kristen first would you be down for sharing how you got your foot in the door and you know maybe when when that was <laughs> what that looked like yeah um I was in college and ended up um with the help of one of my instructors um, getting an internship at Monolith, um, Monolith Productions. And um, I, I was having a hard time prior to his assistance, um, like finding a good internship that was a good fit. Um, but I remember one of the first tasks they gave me, um, since we're like talking about when I started, I think it was um, 2004, maybe. Um, one of the first tasks they gave me, like back then, we we had a bunch of sound effects libraries on disc, and you would literally pull a book, look up descriptions of the sound effects in a book, uh, find the sound effect you want, and literally go rip the sound off the <laughs> CD. Um, and so one of the first tasks they gave me was literally to digitize and and rip all of our sound effects libraries and and um, start building them into a database that we could search. So. Um, and eventually they started giving me more games tasks. But yeah, that's that's essentially how I got my foot in the door. Jeez. That's so man, like currently it's so trivial if you're, you know, looking to you have to make some, I don't know, some big stone and fire based magic ability or something. And you're just like I just pull in tons of stuff, like oh, that might work, that might work, that might work. I don't know, we'll see. And then you go from there. But yeah, you're saying that the idea of experimentation was perhaps not not quite so easy. 
Yeah, iteration definitely a lot slower um, back then. Ugh, brutal. Uh, okay, awesome. Well, thank you. And Brian, you're up. Yeah. Uh, well, this might be similar to a lot of people in the industry, but I started off not. I wanted to be uh, a music educator. I was a music major in college. Um, up until like my last year in college, and then I decided, oh, actually, I don't want to teach anymore. So I uh, tried to think of another career, and I, tried to, I went to like the music business industry. Uh, you know, right after I got out of college, I landed a job in Nashville, and three months later, I got laid off. And oh, it was geez. one of the most, probably the scariest, one of the top scariest moments of my life because it's it was like right at the tail end of the recession, and just didn't know what to do. And so it kind of forced me to really think about, you know. What are, what are my passions? What do I really care about? What do I do all the time? And I love music still, and I love video games. It was kind of like my go-to to de-stress. And decided, I decided to try to put those together. So I was trying to see if I could be a music composer for video games at first. And I was interning with a couple um, studios in Nashville. And then I met uh, Chris Rickwood uh, at Atlanta. He's a composer in Atlanta, an amazing guy. And he... I don't know why he did it, but he gave me a chance, a uh, shot, just to kind of hang out with him. And he was like, yeah, just come over to the studio and then just just shadow me, just see, see what I'm doing. So I would do that regularly. And then finally he was like, oh, you know, here's some, I got a whole bunch of slot machine games that I need help with. You want to do them? Classic. And I did. And I, yeah, I did. I was doing music and sound design for the, the slot machines, like one every week almost. It was it was pretty crazy. Um, it was, but it was like, a lot of fun at the same time. That's like land-based machines as opposed to like uh, like online or something? I think it was online. And it might be... Uh, so I'm not sure because we worked with... They might have put it in like TVs and you would see you see them at bars maybe. I'm mm. not sure exactly where they were implemented. Like I never saw it in action. But um, yeah, I just kind of did that. And then finally it was like, hey, you know, I'll start paying you if you want to do more sound design. And... And I was like, what? Because, you know, in my head, I think this kind of happens to a lot of sound designers. It's like you, you grow up not even thinking it's a career. And then finally something something kind of clicks in your head. You're like, oh, my gosh, people get paid to do this. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of how I got started. That's certainly very one-to-one -one with me as well. I mean, I, you know, y you, I came out of high school and it was like, I, I was pretty, I went to an academic school for high school. And it was like, I can either go into sciences or music and it was like vastly different as far as what my future future might look like and you know chose music in the end and yeah just like yourself I was like yeah so music's a job i've i've like heard music in films and stuff so i was thinking film scoring was the way forward and then uh yeah so it took an audio it took a music composition course and then an audio engineering course later on but in both both cases i was fully targeting working in film for music and then finally someone was like you're just working games you know like People have iPhones now and stuff, and they, like, everyone plays games, and it's totally fine. So yeah, like yourself, I ended up working on a lot of. Um, I was working for a third party studio like ourselves now, but a little, little more um, factory oriented, is like knocking, knocking tons of projects out, and yeah, many of which being casino slot machine, kind of like you have the real turning and like the reward sounds and everything. It's a lot of the same thing over and over again. But yeah, definitely an excellent way to cut your teeth, that's for sure. So when did yeah, you? Yeah, slot machine. Oh, sorry. Go ahead, please. Yeah. I was going to say slot machines are actually a great tool to, to learn sound design, I think, because you have to convey so many different emotions within like just seconds and or less than seconds, like split seconds. And, mm. and the music is, is varied across it, all the ones that it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and even the idea of of like the you lose sound not being too punishing because you don't want them to walk away from the machine. It's a bit of like, yep. it's a bit, yeah, it's, it's, it's a little psychological stuff. But um, so when did you make the, I guess, how did you, or do you ever come to a point where you're like, you know what, slot machines are not what I want to do forever, and let's move on from that? Yeah, so I started to do, um, when I was working with Chris, um, he, he actually works with a lot of a lot of great uh, Atlanta developers. And so he gave me some more uh, things to cut my teeth with, with sound design with more traditional video game style games. So I was working on games like Global Agenda, uh, Smite. Uh, so I was just learning a lot of just how to build um, and ambiences and worlds and also character uh, sound design and that's when I was like oh okay this is this is amazing like you get to actually create a world like or you, you're basically given the sandbox and you're and then you just are given the tools that really make it come to life and um, that's when I was like okay this is what I want to do yeah, yeah so 
Yeah, that's and I and I um, from there I actually uh, I went to GDC. I think it was 2010, and I showed. I did, I also participated in the demo reel derby der, demo derby again or before when we met, mm-hmm. and uh, that's how I actually met Christopher Milroth at Microsoft, and so. Um, he looked at my my test and he, and he came up to me afterwards and he was like, "Hey, uh, great test! You know, you want a gig in Seattle?" <laughs> and I was like, "What?" You know, so yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, that's how I and that's how I met Kristen when we were both at Microsoft. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the Fable that, crossover. That magical day. <laughs> that magical day. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's not the most common thing, like going to GDC and like getting the gig there. That's or at least, you know, having that, like, did it happen that promptly as opposed to being after it wasn't, or something? Well, he definitely, it wasn't that fast. Like, he definitely came up to me and was like, hey, you know, we're, we're, I'm really interested in you. And let's just keep in contact. Because he told me there wasn't anything open for a while. Right. So all we did, we just emailed back and forth for like three or four months, just talking about video games. Um, talking about what we're playing, what we think sounds cool. And then eventually... He uh, emailed me and say, "Okay, hey, we got a, you know, we have a position open, and we want you to, to do a test for it." Awesome. Yeah, it's uh, that that's certainly very in line with what the advice looks like. Basically, every time when someone's like, "Oh, I'm going to GDC, like, is it worth it?" It's like, well, it can be. You know, if it's if it's within your financial means, then if it's within not not a pandemic, then uh, yeah, certainly because you have these, you just trust you're planting seeds, and then try your best to follow up in a genuine manner and just make friends and. Yeah, just trust that there is progress being made, basically. And there you go. Um, okay, awesome. Well, thank you both for for sharing. Appreciate that. Uh, do you want to dive into this? Shall we? Yeah, let's do it. Okay, awesome. Uh, Jack Campbell, I did. I emailed Jack yesterday, and they got back to me and said, "Yeah, looking forward to it." So I assume Jack's at least watching. I don't know if you're in the chat or not, Jack. But if you are, please make yourself known, as it can be very helpful to have like a little bit of back and forth, just to. You know, if we need to clarify things like, what, why did you do this? Or what are you working on now? Or whatever. Oh, JC Game Audio. Of course. There you are. Awesome. Um, all right. Well, I, I guess we might as well just do Jack first. Here's 1230. Perfect. Okay, great. So uh, jcaudio.uk. If you're following along at home, you want to see his stuff, go for it. So we got showreel front page. Only a showreel. Cool. We have about me. Okay, let's read this thing. So. Right, long-ish. Let's go. I am a Bristol-based game audio designer with over 10 years of audio and music production experience, holding a bachelor's degree in creative music technology. Cool. For as long as I can remember, I've been obsessed with sounds, music, and video games, and the incredible experiences that can be found at the intersection of these disciplines. My interest in all things audio initially led me to music production as a teenager, playing with anything I could get my hands on, Music 2000 on PS1, and eventually Reason. I carried this interest through to a music technology college course and then to Bath Spa University to study creative music technology. Okay. During my time at university, I was involved in releasing music and playing shows. At the same time, I found myself fascinated by the by the sound design modules of my university course and focused heavily on sound design for moving image and game audio implementation techniques. Well, this sounds familiar. After a period of learning and experimenting with the engine and its blueprint functionality, I'm currently developing my own projects in Unreal Engine 4 uh, using Audio Kinetics Wise as middleware. My favorite games of all time include, oh, let's go, there's a few here, uh, Metal Gear Solid from 98, Alien Isolation, Star Wars Battlefront 2, Half-Life, Arma 2, DayZ mod, nice, God of War 2018, there you go, Star Wars, uh, Co- uh, yeah, KOTOR, nice, uh, GTA Vice City, good one, Final Fantasy uh, three eyes, eight, and the Elder Scrolls for Oblivion, Asian Pirates 2, Pokemon Gold and Silver, Smash Bros. Melee, Total War Shogun 2, this is a lot. Likes games, Crash Bandicoot, Dead Space, Call of Duty 4. Excellent. So pretty AAA heavy. Nice. Everyone's into the games in the chat. Very nice. Okay. Oh, and currently playing and loving, and then we're just ch- going to change gears hard, Disco Elysium, The Final Cut. That's a very different game than all these ones above. Nice one. Okay. Uh, great. So yeah, maybe worth asking you, Kristen. So when it comes to bios, are, 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 is it important to you at all that a bio exists? Like, do you tend to read it and want to learn about people a little more? I do. Um, I, I tend to like 
easy access to bio, resume, and contact. Like those are my core go tos, right? Nice. Yeah, it's it seems like often the feedback is like, yeah, I, I don't, uh, I don't really miss bios until they're not there, and then you're like, oh, I wish I knew more about this person or something. Yeah. Um, great. And do you have any? I'm not, I'm not a writer at all. Just in terms of bio stuff, I mean, this looks larger than it is probably because I'm so zoomed in. But uh, yeah, I had no problems with this. There was two spaces after currently, Jack, just so you know. I'm a total nitpicker. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, is there any feedback from either of you as far as like just the bio in general? Are you are you are you jacked on it? Jacked? Jack Campbell? Okay. <laughs> I thought I thought it was good. I liked learning about um the passions and and kind of like the where it started from. And I really love that they included some of their favorite games. Like that really got me and pulled me in because I'm like, oh, I love that game. And yeah. like Reading that, I immediately then, if if I were going to connect with this person, we have something to immediately kick off and talk about. You mm -hmm. know, nice. Yeah, Brian, how you feeling? Yeah, I agree with. I I, I would say the same thing. Um, it's really great to see. Like it, you can totally tell that they they play games. Um, it's a great conversation starter, especially like I love a lot of these games on here, so we can easily talk about it. Yeah, this is a real shotgun um, blast. <laughs> it's yeah. like you like one of these, please. <laughs> yeah, uh, it does feel. I feel it does feel maybe a little bit too long. Uh, mm -hmm. Just for about me, because I usually like to get in there, you know, get a taste of their personality. You know, where they're based and some maybe a loaded back background. Because um, mm -hmm. it feels like after the second or third paragraph, I was like, well, what what else is down here? And I was starting to scroll away. Yeah, I mean, in in general, a lot of the feedback or very common feedback is like, look at your entire bio and see if you can remove anything that doesn't apply specifically to you. So things like I'm very passionate about sound, like everyone has that in their bio always. So that may be room to, you know, pull down things like this. The fact you've been in audio for 10 years. I mean, we sure hope that you like your job and you're staying it for, in it for a reason, you know. So like that kind of thing, you probably pull back and even like mentioning your your degree twice like there's probably room to pull things just dial it back just a hair but on, on the whole yeah i'm a big fan of the games thing as well i feel like it's a pretty good it's like a really good casual middle ground because in general you want to keep these things relatively professional of course but you don't want to be you know you don't want to be jokey and this is a good kind of like yeah and by the way these games are awesome it's certainly a big part of the gig okay great so let's just have a glance across these other tabs before we get back to the real we got portfolio some audio redesign stuff. Okay. Uh, Soul City. I don't know what this is. Props will learn on the demo reel. Metro Exodus is Josh in the house. Josh loves Metro redesigns. Um, great. And some more Ys and UB4. Okay. And finally, Project Breakdowns. Oh, so here's two of the things that we just saw, looks like. Yes. Very nice. Okay. And we got contact, finally, just a contact form. Okay, well, I guess we might as well watch this reel, yeah? Oh, Josh is here, there he is. <laughs> Good to see you, pal. Okay, uh, right, I'm gonna go full screen, make sure I'm all volumed up, I believe I am. Okay, yeah, and Kristen and Brian, I'll just meet myself out of politeness to you both, and we'll uh, get going here in three, two, one, and. some claps thank you <laughs> nice okay well before we dive into too much minutia 
Uh, Kristen, do you have like a one sentence first impression? Yeah, I thought there were some really um, nice, like focused on creating a cinematic experience, especially in the opening sequences. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I, I think, though, there's some detail that I would have loved to have seen there um, that I'm sure we'll talk about soon. Awesome. Uh, yeah, I loved the the cinematic element, too. I just I love reels where it is relatively clear that they made this thing with like a deliberate flow to it. It's just, yeah, it, it goes a long way to suggest that you have those kind of chops for other um, aspects of this, the discipline as well. Um, okay, great. So let's talk about, let's remind ourselves here. We got presentation, material selection, content quality, and distinction. So let's go through a bit of presentation first here. Um, we kind of already have mentioned a little bit of that. But just in terms of flow and stuff, yeah, I'll ask I'll ask you again, Kristen, perhaps. Um, what do you have any kind of like preference or recommendation when it comes to the length of a like a like a demo piece like this? It's it's interesting. I actually like the multiple pieces kind of fast cut um, when I'm looking for a, a job that that keeps it succinct and like easy to digest, but also shows me a lot of variety. Um, so that's like typically what I want. It's definitely not what I did on my own reel. So ignore that. If you <laughs> ignore I, yes. But yeah, ignore <laughs> what I did. Um, but uh, yeah, I thought this did a good job on on length and in terms of like showing me some co different types of of coverage mm -hmm. yeah it's it seems like um uh we were we had um Rayson varner from uh, obsidian a little while back and he was we, we were just kind of discussing how it seems like the longer you've been like the more experience you have in the game space the more you can justify a longer reel because you have just more things that are kind of worth seeing or, or like you know, more, more things you can like suggest are worth seeing. Whereas if you're newer to the game space, it can be harder to, you know, justify that kind of thing because you just haven't worked on things that much. And you can't do like the TED Talk style of reel. You need to do just here's some stuff. I'm awesome, right? Okay, thanks for your time. And that's it. So yeah, yeah. Minute, minute eight, I'm down with it. I also feel like I, I care about what the reel's trying to show me. And I might change my opinion on, on what it's trying to show me. Like if it's a more technical implementation reel that's cut with content or versus just a like straight sound design reel, I might look for something slightly different. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, starting out, we got what? We got a quick fade in, little J cut, it sounds like. Well, almost. I guess kind of like the the opening is loosely designed. Is there just thunder? What's happening here? Yeah, so I, I was thinking it was kind of a, a J cut thing into the next clip, but I guess maybe not because Godfall isn't really a thunderous environment or anything. Um, yeah, Brian, do you have any any hard opinions on that kind of thing? Like when it comes to the opening cut, I love seeing like a designed you know motion graphic name popping in. It it goes a long way to show you're serious, but I mean, yeah. Do you, do you have any thoughts on the, like just the thunder there? Yeah, actually, when when it first started, it I think the visuals like of the, the of Jack's name just kind of like fading in. It felt kind of um, and with the thunder, it really set up this emotional like almost mysteriousness or somberness, mm -hmm. and it kind of made me really it made me want to keep listening because it it felt like uh, something serious was about to happen. So I thought I thought like the the technique of the fades, the the subtleness, the, the kind of the minimalist too, with the thunder underneath it, it uh, it it drew me in to the beginning. Yeah, I you know what it did me too, and I'm kind of surprised because this, like on paper, this is the kind of thing I would usually say like, oh, I don't do that. That's such like it's such a basic thing to do. Like, it's like one thunder thing, and you're done. Like put more time designing it, and making it your own. But it was kind of, yeah, it didn't at all distract me when it happened. So. Maybe it's fine. <laughs> Leave it as is. Uh, okay, so let's move on to the next clip here. We got Godfall, Counterplay Games, Audio Redesign. Okay, and this thing, the lower third stays up the whole time, looks like. This transition, though, I saw some people in the chat were big fans. I'm going to play this at a low volume here. So let's go. We got a big swing and explode. Yeah, pretty sick. Chris, you're down with that? 
I really liked the cut into the explosion. It felt really intentional. Yeah, so cool. I love that. Just the idea of sound design being a storytelling medium. We're looking to support the narrative generally in our in our gig. So yeah, just having like this the story of you and having a very clear idea that you are you are telling the story the way you want to tell it and not just saying, not just grabbing some clips and throwing them onto the timeline, which we certainly see plenty of. This kind of thing goes like, oh, nice. I can really kind of keep someone's attention as you go into the next clip. Very nice. Okay, we got Anthem, Bioware, Audio Redesign again. And then uh, that moves into right here. Where was it? 40 seconds-ish. Yeah, that's so sick, too. That transition on the, on the pickup. It's like a similar color palette on the... On the pickup and the was like kind of a spark flaming thing. The next clip, the lighting of a spider web was it? Yeah, that's sick. Yeah, it blends so seamlessly. Yeah, I I wasn't even sure like what what you had done there, Jack. Like what the transition was. It just it worked so perfectly. It was so nice. Oh, I'm a fan. I think Aaron Bowers has some uh, some competition here. Aaron Bowers is like my go to for for a guy who did this with his reel and like. He had a clip where he he redesigned actually Subnautica Below Zero, and then he like climbed up a ladder and cut at the top of the ladder and it was to, to Soma of this guy like cresting a ladder. It's like, oh yes, amazing. So very nice. Okay, and this is again all Metro into the end, which is what just a tasteful fade out on the Metro audio. Okay, uh, all right. I mean, nice on the as far as flow and stuff goes. Like really nice, Jack. Good job. So into material selection, though. So in this kind of case, uh, Kristen, you, you'd mentioned how you like seeing a variety of, of content, getting a good feel for the person, that kind of thing, in, you know, in the minute time. So, I mean, we saw in the portfolio that there are some other pieces that's, that include things like some UE4 work, it looked like. Um, is, is that something you'd like to see in the demo reel as well? Or, as well, or do you feel like you got enough out of this that you'd, you'd want to look further and you'd see those things anyways? I mean, I probably would um, look forward and, and look at the Unreal work, but I do love to see those put together in uh, kind of smash cut with the video so that I can really connect what I'm like, what I'm seeing in Unreal, seeing it working to what I'm hearing. Um, whereas I, I feel like it's so cool to have the the, the blueprint work included on um, the website, but I also felt like I was clicking out and having to jump around to see it. So that's why I like having that type of stuff like showcased in the reel with the work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one one thing that comes up relatively frequently on Real Talk is this idea that, I mean, we, just, we as we said previously in this same, this same segment, like there's just so many reels to get through for a given job posting. There's so many candidates to consider, right? So the idea of, having kind of like this this one minute truncated like this is every if, if you only have a minute if you have like a lunch meeting to get to here is all you need to know and it's you're gonna you're gonna knock your socks off and you can come back and look at some more later later on if you want but this is like this is the need to know right here and yeah jack i'd argue that your need to know is not as fully need to know as it could be like it's not as inclusive because it seems like i mean your work is strong in here so i feel like this stuff is probably you know, at least worth looking at. And uh, it's it's just really up to you, Jack. Like, if you think that it's worth running the risk that people might not see this, or if you feel confident enough that you're like, oh, no, that my stuff kicks ass, and they will for sure click through and see the other things too. So, yeah, really up to you. Just, be, just bear in mind that is, uh, that is a possibility. Um, so I guess maybe worth just... I mean, it seems obvious to me, but uh, Brian, one thing we, we ask ourselves looking at this stuff is like well given the pieces they've chosen like what kind of job do you think they're aiming for and i would say triple a are you in agreement there yeah for sure i mean yeah it seems mm -hmm. seems pretty clear despite the disco elysium shout in the, in the bio uh awesome okay so let's move into content quality so brian uh, we'll start with the godfall clip do you have any thoughts in terms of like what's working what you might have done differently that kind of thing hold up one more time just so I really love just the, the Foley work was, I really love the Foley work. Uh, everything felt tangible, real, has some weight. And there's this one part, the part that kind of stood out to me was there's like a powered up moment. Let me find it. Oh, actually, yeah. When they first, when they first, when the swords meet and you get this big 
metallic hit and then this the the, the blast wave out mm-hmm. um i thought that was really it was a really cool standout moment um it was everything that i would have expected to hear when i first see it too and then also the uh the moment when i guess one of them oh yeah it's he tosses up in the air and this, that magical spiral of the the hammer was a really cool moment too Hmm. yeah on the whole i mean i don't really have any I've seen this. This clip is being designed more and more often. It's kind of becoming like, it's it's moving into over-designed territory, uh, as far as the reels we see at least. So mm-hmm. that's maybe a consideration. But I mean, it's strong. It's really good. The, I think the only feedback that I can think of right now that I, I mean, in watching these things, I try and like keep a second set of eyes like over here over my shoulder, like watching myself for things like if I get jarred or that kind of thing. And I feel like I may have been kind of like, oh, geez, on the the very first impact. I'm going to go full volume again just to see that. So here we go. Yeah, that very first clack, um, I definitely jumped. So yeah, be maybe be aware of that, Jack. I mean, it's like a, the smallest nitpicky kind of piece of feedback. But this sword going down, um, I don't know if it'd be, it doesn't, doesn't scream like loud and stereo and 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 uh you know like super hard transient just be aware of that because yeah we are going from like just ambience only this as brian said this mysterious like oh we're gonna pull you in to listen to more and it's like bam right off the bat so yeah be be aware of just kind of the danger of those kind of transients coming out of nowhere uh and also just from like a storytelling standpoint if you want to help things like that awesome moment that Brian mentioned, like of the sword coming down and the shockwave coming out. Like that's obviously a big moment in the story and to have like the sword just touching the ground beforehand and having that like almost equally loud is almost working as like a disservice to the later impact. Cause you want to try and have like your dynamics um, somewhat reflective of, of the action going down. Uh, but having some power there is, you know, certainly arguable. So yeah, it's, it's, it's good to have it fully designed as you have to just keep that in mind. Um, okay, Kristen, do you have any thoughts on the, the Godfall clip? Yeah, I mean, I had a little bit of feedback to give, I think, more around the impacts towards the end of the sequence, mm-hmm. where I, w- I was struggling a little bit to tell, I think, what was a block versus what was, like, landing damage. Um, and so for me, I'm always looking for those, like, how much gameplay feedback is this is this providing the the player in a reel? And I just think um, creating a little bit more distinction between the blocks and impacts and um, that being damaging, I think could could feel nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when there's like a, a punch being landed, right? Like right here, let's see. Yeah, perfect. You're totally, yeah, very, very nice. So the 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 block here beforehand is basically the same sound as like the punch being landed. I'm to listen to that one more time here, just for reference. Block here. Yeah, like they're kind of the same impact in that case. Mm-hmm. Nice one. Okay, let's move on to the anthem clips. We start with a nice explosion here. Let's go, let's do it one more time, just for reference. I love that you included the just the movement afterwards, kind of the just the quiet after the storm. I love that, that the fact that you included that part because oftentimes people will not. They'll just have like the action packed bit and then move on from there. Uh, yeah. So, Kristen, I'll start with this with you this time. Um, I'm super. I'm super not a big like shooty shooty gun designer guy at all. It's not really the space I reside in. But uh, do you have any thoughts on the anthem clip? I thought it was really good. I thought it was very stylish. Um, like it really showed me something different uh, from the previous clip, which I really appreciated. Um, I I really liked there were techie UI elements and um, the guns felt like they had a lot of character. Mm-hmm. The, o- the only piece of feedback I would give is that I wanted to hear a little bit more of the, the, um, the tail on the, the, like, the sniper shots and how, how that like moved through the world. But, um, I thought it was a lot of, a lot of personality. Yeah. I'm, 
I mean, the <clears throat> the one thing that comes up, comes up in the chat often is the idea of uh, pushing back against this I, this this concept of like single syllable gunfire, where it's like ba, and that's the entire thing. It's like more like kind of thing as they're as they're shooting, and certainly heard that on this sniper shot. Very cool. Um, Brian, any any anthem hot takes? Yeah, I, I agree with what everything was Kristen was saying. It's super stylish. I really like the, the, just how much how different it feels compared to the first clip. Uh, I do think that I'm not sure it might be the maybe the rifle right before the lock on stuff. Like you just said, it kind of just has one syllable, and I think it could have a little bit more of a like <laughs> something that has a little bit of like a second syllable right before to have that trigger sound to give it a little bit more character. Mm. And then uh, the moment when the moment when um, your player is locking onto all the enemies and then the shooting and everything, it feels it feels kind of chaotic. It feels like the dynamics are all like sitting up here. I feel like some maybe like the the UI sound for the the lock on can be can be a bit more subdued because it happens so often. Um, it can get kind of grating if you hear it uh, yeah. about ten times in this video. Totally. So something maybe a little bit softer, uh, lower in volume. But, but still Cicada, so you can kind of get that feeling like, oh, I'm locking on to all these enemies. And then yeah. um, I can, do you have something to say? Um, yeah, on that, just on the lock on thing, just from a design standpoint, yeah, the, the it being grating or kind of repetitive, it's it's tricky, Jack, because like you want to have something that stands out from the rest of the soundscape and, and beeps will certainly do that. But I think you're just, you're, you know, you're, you're faced with the challenge of making this also sound like good news because, you know, locking onto enemies is like, great, there's going to be, you know, good things like big explosions to follow and that's good news for the player. But if you close your eyes and listen to this, it, it could easily be like, uh, like, uh, you're flying too low, like alarm in a, in a fighter jet or something, you know, like it, it's kind of bordering on alarm territory as opposed to this is a good thing. So Maybe like some kind of upwards inflection, like blink, 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 like something that has a little more positivity to it. Um, but yeah, it's it's challenging because it is a very short, short and repetitive sound. So yeah, you're just you're faced with that with that challenge, obviously. Yeah, it feels like it sounds like a sound of someone locking onto you, actually. Mm, yes, totally. Uh, yeah. Okay, let's move on to the final clip here, and we'll have a second just to glance at those other pieces too before we move on to Jeremy's stuff. So here's Metro, Josh Adam Bell's favorite game. Let's go. Cool. Uh, Brian, your thoughts. Yeah, this this is pretty cool. I, I liked it a lot. I, I feel like just giving it um, a bit more, uh, making it feel a bit closer, because because this is a first person game, and he's that creature is literally chomping its teeth right in front of the camera, like making it almost feel uncomfortable how close that sound, the teeth clenching down and biting in front of the player. I think just having that little detail can give it make it feel more unse more unsettling and scary. Um, and then like right at the very end. There's a moment where it's just kind of like, oh, and I, and I was kind of hoping, like, um, for death sounds, you, you kind of want to have a, like a satisfying, like, oh, okay, I've killed it. Like, you're, you're, you want that kind of response as a player. So just playing up the death, like, right, it, because in the video, it's, yeah, it's like the its face is shaking, like the jowls are shaking. Mm -hmm. So having something like, and yeah, just yeah, yeah. falling over, just to let the player know, like, oh, this is a definite death animation it's a different thing than the rest of the soundscape thus far let's just have a listen to that really fast here this is right at the very end yeah totally silent during the jowl shake worth some love there uh Kristen, any thoughts there yeah i had very similar notes to brian um so i think i agree with everything he's saying like ways to feel the the perspective shift when he's farther versus closer like ways to make the jowls pop his teeth pop um there's a moment where he like bites down on your arm and i'm like that's really hungry for some like teeth hard cracks like detail to have that moment really pop out and create like i think 
the scene would feel way more intimidating and a bit more frightening. Um, I think even doing things like maybe trying to push a little distortion on the voice when it's in your face too can really help with that presence. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, similar notes. Cool. Uh, great. So then let's go ahead and move on real quick. We have like five minutes ish until until one o'clock to move on to Jeremy. Let's just look at the portfolio clip maybe the project breakdown i'm just gonna glance at this soul city thing really fast so oh let's just play in the in the same window so are you talking to us jack you are not talking to us this is a clip oh i've seen have you seen this before i feel like i've seen someone redesign this in the past this must be like a demo like some available demo thing josh did you design this or someone from over in the UK? <laughs> someone there, right? <clears throat> I can't recall. Okay, so it's simply just like an ambient an ambient clip walking through a city with some rain and stuff. Danny Quinn, thank you, Josh. Yeah, Danny did this, this redesign. Nice one. Um, or not redesign, but rather uh, that same project. Okay, so project breakdown. Is this video the same video? It's the same one. Okay, so that's maybe worth mentioning jack is like having the same thing in two places on your site is a little bit like a bait and switch because right now i already watched this video on your portfolio page and now on the project breakdown page i'm kind of expecting to have a more like if i'm if i see a video here i kind of expect to click this video and have you being like hey i'm jack campbell and here is a breakdown of the thing i made and it's like an eight minute video of you talking about like what you did in in ue4 etc etc so um, maybe that's worth asking you to actually like that for me personally, I love when those things exist because if their front page has been effective and has like got the hooks in and I want to see more then this video, that's like self narrated and has commentary and has a little more in depth information about their work. Like I love seeing that because is that the kind of thing you want to watch Kristen? Yeah, I think this is the part where I'm like, I have to refer back to what I had just heard because I don't know that I would sit with the video a second time. Um, and mm. so like having uh, the audio in your show reel as well as being able to showcase some of the blueprint um, work and maybe some of the wise structure while narrating over talking about what you did and then showing it, I think is really impactful. Um, but yeah, I, I look at, kind of setups like these and I'm really glad it's here and and I want to get into it but it's more like when I'm seeking out for like more my own educational purposes rather than looking at reels I feel like I don't um sit with these things as long as I probably should Mm -hmm. yeah it's more of like okay cool it's here and now moving on (laughs) it's just like this it's almost like the for, for me at least I see something like this page and all this text like it's clear Jack that you put a lot of thought into this you put all the time into preparing these, you know, these little screen caps and stuff. Um, but like, I'm not going to read all this text. It's just, it's really demanding of your time. And if you're able to instead do a video, that's like a video version of this text. That is you like walking us through what you did in a really succinct manner. I think that's going to be more likely. It's not going to be a definite ever, but it'll be more likely that it'll be, you know, something that might pull people in and, and make them want to learn more. And also just hearing you talk about your work just helps us learn more about you because like hearing someone speak on a topic they're passionate about is uh you know a great way to learn about somebody um yeah i guess this final thing there brian so i mean are you a similar mindset are you gonna like would you watch this video if it was let's say like five minutes long a quick you know narrated walk through the thing if you already are like oh man i'm like team jack campbell big time right now i want to learn more yeah i think i would especially if um if you if he's explaining it in a way that's like a little bit entertaining too, where you're, you're, you're drawing the listener in and um, it's enjoyable to listen to and, and you're sh- showing lots of interest in what you're doing. Um, it's always, I'm always interested in hearing other people that are passionate about what they're doing and what they're working on. For sure. And I get the feeling, Jack, that you could do that. Like you could make something that is engaging to watch with like good transitions because your reel has good transitions. So you've already demonstrated that you have this ability. So um, I would love to see like your version of a unreal and wise project breakdown video with you talking over the thing. That'd be awesome. Uh, okay. So finally, before we move on to Jeremy, um, the very last thing here, the last note distinction. So Brian, uh, if you saw this reel amidst, let's say 500 reels 
in an application to some PlayStation Studios job posting, like, would you think that Jack is standing out in a positive way in a crowd? Yeah, I definitely would. Because one of the things I, I really look for is someone that, like, some designer that can, uh, is, is a good storyteller. Because, you know, storytelling is just about trying to convey ideas, emotions, feelings. And for, um, to be able to see him do that and, like, make me uh, have emotions and feelings when I'm watching his, just, just his, his showcase is pretty strong, I think. Nice. And Kristen, your thoughts? Yeah, I mean... I think so. I think like the fact that I'm seeing, you know, sound design skills as well as technical skills too, like that really pulls me in and makes me more intrigued and and, and um, shows like a breadth of 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 skill set there. Nice. Okay, I am client. I'm inclined to agree. Really strong, real. Like I was saying, Jack. I mean, the the way this is edited, this is one of the more uh, like mindfully edited reels I've seen in a while. So really nice. Like even if the work they're in was not very good, the editing was awesome. And I would be like, this is awesome. And they're clearly serious. And they have that, they have those chops at least. And the sound design part will come. But I mean, you're already in a strong place for your sound design too. So really, really nice. Good job. Uh, okay. Let's move on to Jeremy Scott Olson. Thank you, Jack. Okay, we got a different kind of page here. We got a vertical page with a bunch of text and videos and stuff. We have uh, things on the side and the top. We have sound for games, um, scoring and composing, sound for picture, voices I've recorded, and music re recording and mixing. I guess we're in, because I see the URL is pretty long. It's like main.jeremyscottolson.com slash sound for picture slash sound for games. So I guess this is the link you would send if you were applying to some game gig or something jeremy as opposed to applying for some film gig you might send them like the sound for a picture or scoring and composing or something link instead is that, is that the idea so i'll stay on this tab confirm in chat please jeremy if you can otherwise for the time being uh yeah i'm not sure if either of you have clicked this yet but don't click it yet um the blog link when do you think the last blog post was just take a guess i don't know yet i don't i don't know yet myself i'm just curious if you, if, what you think <laughs> Brian, take a guess. Oh, you're asking us? Yeah, I'm asking <laughs> you. What do you think? Um, no, God, I don't know. November. Okay. And Kristen? January. <laughs> it's, it's, it's hard, right? It's uh, You want to be nice. But it's like, uh, we saw one. We, we literally saw one blog post that was like four years old on Real Talk. We're like, oh, man, maybe it's time to retire the blog. Um, I'm going to be generous and say last week let's see let's see here blog we got we got may 11th yo two days ago okay very nice <laughs> that's not that's not common was this done in preparation for real talk perhaps it was uh before that was february so yeah not bad not bad at all uh okay so back to the main page we got about me let's check this out Again, longish. Let's have a read through. About me, I do sound and music. I currently work in LA recording and editing the dialogue for Seth MacFarlane's American Dad. That's fun. I record about 70% 70 70 of the show's dialogue and other vocal hilarity, cut each episode together, and lock this audio with the executive producers and writers. I've run thousands of voiceover sessions and at least 100 group ADR, or Walla, sessions. I sorry. At any given moment, I'm working with about eight hours of show material and eight thousand lines of dialogue. Killer. Previously, I did this same job on the Cleveland show, and before that, I was the assistant to Patrick Clark, the production mixer slash dialogue editor, uh, Family Guy. I guess maybe the word fork I go in there. Through it all, I've recorded Kanye West's rapping, Justin Timberlake singing, and Lisa Simpson's saxophone, and a slew of terribly talented people. This is a fun bio so far. Prior to my current run on Seth MacFarlane's shows, I headed up audio restoration for picture at now defunct Hollywood Post House Novastar, fixing up audio for old TV shows and movies, training and coordinating the restoration staff, helping with hiring and bidding, and developing procedures and manuals for the future. I recently scored the action and comedy feature Boris and the Bomb and contributed ADR recording to the feature comedy. Uh, is this a an errant a typical wednesday and the showtime limited series the loudest voice 
I have also recorded dialogue for the Emmys and the Orville, done some sound editing and mixing, recorded and mixed a bunch of music projects, uh, played in the Laker band, performed live with Fleet- Fleetwood Mac, and with the Rescues, and taught high school and middle school music, as well as private drum set lessons. Let's go, Jeremy. Uh, I live in Burbank with my wonderful wife, Heather, who also works in sound, Hollywood power couple, and we have two daughters who make lots of funny sounds, though not professionally yet. I'm a drummer, a runner, and a USC Trojan. I love to play play the guitar and sing, cook, drink great beer and wine, and to listen to brilliant sound and music people geek out about what they know best. A proud member of Motion Picture Editors Guild, Motion Picture Sound Sound Editors, National Association of Recording Arts and Sciences, Academy of Television Arts and Sciences, Society of Composers and Lyricists, and Academy of Recording Arts, sorry, Scoring Arts. That is resume, Twitter, and Instagram. Yo, so I, I, I... was like too long, Jeremy. But yo, apparently you need a long body. You do a lot of stuff, man. <laughs> Not bad. Uh, yeah, atypical. Okay, so atypical is perhaps correct. I'm just being silly. Um, Kristen, bio thoughts. I think it's really amazing. I, I really enjoy um, hearing about the experience that you've already had. Um, reading uh, your About Me, I don't necessarily get a sense that you um, love games or that are you're interested in games. Um, and so I would kind of bucket your interest in more of the Hollywood um, film space um, and animation space. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because if I go to, I'm not curious. Uh, I may have ignored your response, Jeremy, if you said regarding like what link to click. Um, okay, so anything, practically anything you don't like on this site is a result of me starting this site many years ago and continually avoiding a total overhaul, grimaces. Okay, yeah, so if I go to like your scoring and composing page, is your about me the same? Like it's only one bio, right? Yeah, it's, it's, the, it's the same bio. So yeah, I mean, you know, that's maybe a, a, an astute, thing to mention Kristen is like if you've got your sound for games page here at Jeremy it may be worth having your your bio for sound for games um separate because yeah you're looking to convince like when you with any job posting and any kind of job in the world you're looking to tell someone that you are the least risky hire and the the idea of saying hey I am, I am thoroughly invested in the game space should be a chief goal of yours absolutely because again, if you have someone like, I mean, let's even look at Jack Campbell's right, right before yours, like your bios alone and nothing else. It's, it, it's abundantly clear that Jack is highly invested in the game space and has played games for a long, long time. Whereas for your about me, we have like no, no uh, indication almost whatsoever that you are in the game space. We certainly have plenty of indication that you're highly passionate about sound and music. And that goes a long way, certainly. But I mean, you have this passion for sound and music, but, you know, Jack Campbell has that too, not to pit you against against each other or anything, but like there's plenty of candidates, I'm sure, for any gig who would be um, equally uh, passionate and such. And even with all your experience, you might still lose out if someone thinks that, you know, well, I can hire this person who is in the game space and and understands interactive media more Then yeah, that might be something you need to, or you you may consider bringing to the forefront a little more. Um, okay, let's go ahead and move on to the, I guess the main page again. We have like a resume, not too concerned about that right now. Well, okay, we have sound for games. A few things here, we have the front. So there is the, what looks like a demo reel up top. So my game sound design demo reel. Thanks for taking the time to listen. Lovingly crafted from synthesized, personally recorded and library sounds I layered and processed and destroyed. And a couple of sounds recorded by my awesome sound designer wife on her travels in New Zealand, jealous. Thanks to the zillions of creative, hardworking devs behind Bioshock, Half-Life Alex, Destroy All Humans, and Breath of the Wild for such inspiring gameplay to put sound to. Okay. So it seems like this is going to be a redesign reel. We're in a minute and 28. Uh, okay, my audio is cranked. And I will, again, mute myself for you two. And let's watch this thing in three, two, one, and go.
right. And one of those. Thanks, Jeremy. Okay. Let me just get back over here again. Oh, my bad. One second. There we go. Uh, here. All right. So, Brian, before we dive into the nitty gritty, do you have any, well, again, just like the one sentence first impression approach first. Um, let's see, I'm trying to, I guess I was a little confused on, I guess, what um, he was trying to convey in terms of what he's wanting to work on. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I just felt like there was, I didn't get a clear sense of, um, like, a strong uh, stand or, like, a strong foot on the ground saying, this is what I'm passionate about. Yeah. I'm inclined to agree. Let's, uh, yeah, let's dig into that a little bit. So how about, how about this actually? So we'll, we're talking presentation first. It's a minute and a half. That's on the longer side, in my opinion, in terms of like looking to get into the game space. Cause yeah, you're in a, you're in a unique position or not the most common position, at least Jeremy, in that you have, you have like a boatload of experience in a lot of things that I'm sure people in the chat would be like, Oh, I wish I could do that. Or ha I had done that. But your game experience is obviously you know, quite quite small, if, if anything at all. So you've got this minute and a half, and I didn't... I don't know that I got bored, but I may have... Maybe during Half-Life Alex, I felt like I wanted to click ahead a little bit. Just a little bit. It wasn't egregious. There certainly have been some reels in the past where it's like the first clip is 30 seconds long, and it's like the same unchanging clip and you're like oh man <laughs> this is tough to get through uh let's uh yeah so what i was going to ask Kristen is even like the name of the reel is called march 2021 update like i mean i know some people have like, some hard opinions when it comes to like the names of real like, if it's like demo reel or sound design reel or show reel or that kind of thing do you have any thoughts there honestly i hadn't even noticed until <laughs> you oh, pointed it out <laughs> so not an issue <laughs> No problem. Yeah, I think the, the only reason it comes up is like a maybe concern, Jeremy, is like when when it starts getting farther and farther from the March 21 date, it looks like, okay, well, is this still accurate to what you can currently do? And it's, I mean, your goal should be just to have like your hottest stuff, you know, whatever that currently is all the time on your reel. And the assumption will be that it's like, it's up to date. So you probably don't need to have it dated. Just say like it's the just the demo reel, period, and just make your old one private or something, and like and, and you're done. Uh, okay, though we have. I'm gonna play this just from the very beginning. We got some fun motion graphic text. Cool. We got some lower thirds, maybe a bit too low though, Jeremy. It's it's fighting with YouTube UI. You see here, yeah. So Bioshock 2, 2K games, linear redesign, all audio. Uh, all audio probably isn't necessary, just, and also linear probably isn't necessary. Um, in general, I, I personally at least will recommend just like trimming fat, whatever you can, because any additional text just serves as a distraction from watching your awesome scene. So I think the ideal scenario is like, you have some text here that someone can just like glance at, get it and get back to the, the action in front of you. Um, again, super, super nitpick, but just a consideration there. Um, I do like the fact that it's this, this kind of, um, you know, black fading into the background with the white on top of it. makes it very easy to see, et cetera. Great. Uh, moving on. Yeah, maybe in terms of, like, transition stuff, Brian, do you have any thoughts there just from clip to clip? Clip to clip, it, it I think it, um, I was just thinking about this more, like, what what about this was, it like, that it felt, it felt a little weird. I think it's because, in general, like, um, it feels like these these clips feel like great exercises uh, on its own, mm -hmm. and but then put together, I feel like it doesn't. I'm not sure what the what you're trying to tell us as as a sound designer, like what you're saying, like this is um, for the listener at least. But the the transitions, I think, I think that's where it got me. It was like I, I just felt like because I was almost expecting something else to happen, and then it transitions to another thing that was completely opposite. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, Jeremy Jeremy jokes in the chat. It felt weird because Jack's transitions were so badass. I mean, 
I, yeah, we, we definitely don't actively compare. We try not to actively compare like the two reels are on one show just out of politeness to everyone. But I mean, yeah, I mean, there you go. I mean, if, if you applied for a gig with Jack and you know, you just have that indication of like, well, here is what another reel might look like. And you can see um, even without considering the sound design they're in, it's like they're, they're obviously very deliberately put together. So with yours, yeah, I, it definitely felt more like the, I have these clips that these things I did and here they all are in one video for your viewing pleasure, as opposed to something that was crafted for the purpose of, you know, selling yourself and your abilities. Um, yeah. So I guess the, yeah. So back to the length thing. So Kristen, did you feel the length was fine? Now a minute and a half versus a minute last time. You know, I don't know that it's the total length that got me. I think it's the amount of time you spend inside of each clip. Mm. Um, like, I think what, what people are talking about in the transitional flow of like how you digest each scene and then move into the next scene, like that cadence and that rhythm kind of allows the listener to like have something climatic happen and then have a moment of breath, like to, uh, to reset before going into a very fast paced um, sequence. And so I think for me, it wasn't about the whole length as much as it was trying to be like, wait, I transitioned now. What am I um, paying attention to? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. Cause there was, there was one transition that I, I had kind of like laughed a bit. I don't know if it was audible on stream or not, but the, uh, it was the end of half-life Alex, I believe it was like right here, 51 seconds. I'll turn it up here. It's <laughs> just like, yeah, it's gone. It just cuts to black in the middle of a, of an enemy cry. And that was kind of a little more like, okay, yeah, there was definitely like not a whole lot of like active thought put into when we're transitioning. It's like, and we're done moving on. So that's uh yeah, something to consider for sure. Jeremy, let's go into, I, Oh, please. Yeah. Kristen. I was going to say, I did love going into half-life Alex and, and like seeing a physics moment because physics is like the <laughs> crux of those games. And like, it was so weighty and like, it literally made me smile. So yeah, you know what? I, I laughed at the, at the same thing for like a positive reason. And I glanced at discord and I saw you smile. And I was like, that's probably the same reaction, <laughs> the same moment. Yeah, very nice. I love the squeak on the, on the movement too, of the head crab. Uh, oh yeah, that was a good moment too. <laughs> very nice. Uh, okay, let's go into so material selection. Um, Brian, you were saying that from this clip, you weren't super clear on what Jeremy wants to be doing just in general. I mean, more specifically, do you think you could kind of nail down what area of the industry or what kind of games um, Jeremy might want to be working on eventually? Um, I guess I couldn't. It seems it seems like AAA because you've got Half Life um zelda in there um but it, in terms of like even i guess aside from like triple a like i guess I, I wasn't getting a sense of because usually people will say like oh i'm this is my um i'm a combat sound designer or this is what i'm really passionate about or this is what the job i'm going for like mm -hmm. i'm all about magic or um more fully driven or physics um but it just felt like there wasn't a strong push into any one of those directions yeah yeah, I'm inclined to agree. I mean, Kristen, do you have any idea, any do you care to take any guesses at what kind of gigs Jeremy is vying for? I mean, I would have said really moody um, games or horror games until we cut into um, oh, just, destroy, destroy all humans. humans. <laughs> yeah, I mean, even even like the size of the studio you're looking to work with, like the kind of games. I mean, like the the, the size, you know, magnitude of these games. I I really have no idea. I mean, Half-Life Alex is a massively different game than Destroy All Humans. So it's, yeah, it's, it's tricky. I mean, and it might be, Jeremy, that you don't even know yourself as far as what kind of like specific games you want to work on. And you're just looking to flex this muscle a bit and look into the interactive space. And that's totally fine. Of course, that's great. Uh, again, like Brian said, this is a wonderful exercise for you. Just be aware that that that, that might be something to consider as far as like what your demo reel is communicating. And, you know, ideally it could be doing some double duties saying, Hey, look how awesome I am. And my work is amazing. And also it's very clear that I am a good fit for your studio and you're applying for some, you know, it's like a horror demo reel and you're applying to a horror, uh, like a game is making a, a, a team is making a horror game right now. It's like, it's a clear that we're, we're speaking the same language, right? Whereas in this case, it's a bit more of a scattershot kind of thing and it might not land as a result. So content wise though, uh, how are you feeling on the Bioshock clip, Brian? Yeah, I love the the transition from 
coming underneath the water to you above the water. Uh, I think you can just play up that moment more. I think you can play up those, those that dichotomy a lot, a lot more. So like when you're underwater, uh, more the more sounds of bubbles just rushing everywhere. Especially when I think it's the uh, the plane propeller that falls through the water. Um, just really like it almost you almost want to feel like you're like you're in the middle of water. It's almost quiet, and then you hear this huge you know mass just flying down, and then the bu- bubble trail uh, afterwards. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. I I do yeah. like that transition moment, but I feel like yeah, with you, I kind of wanted to hear more. Just like a more a more like crazy distinction between like that shift, because even in terms of the story, like we could be drowning, and now we're not going to drown. Although it's still it's still bad news. It's like moving from one horrible scenario into another horrible scenario. Uh, Kristen, any Bioshock thoughts beyond that? I mean, I had similar feedback. I got really excited initially because who doesn't love uh, Bioshock? It's an amazing sounding game. Yeah. Um, and who doesn't love playing with hydrophone recordings? You know. Um, <laughs> and so I, I was initially really excited, and I think I just I I agree with Brian. I wanted and and Kevin. I wanted more in the scene, more um, water, more detail, and I wanted like cleaner, more um, metal tonal stuff that rang out and kind of had these long groans and like um, just to sell more about what that thing was that was falling by me and things like that. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, yeah, nice. Uh, okay, then it's just carrying on then, Kristen. How about the next clip? And Alex, I know you love this physics moment, the squeak on the on the head crab there. Um, yeah, I mean, that <laughs> made this whole scene for me. Like, yeah, yeah, I was yeah. just so happy uh, to hear the physics um, and how much character and personality it was. Um, I liked that it kind of showed me a really different style, too, um, from the previous sequence, but it wasn't such a drastic jump um, that it that it felt jarring. So I, I thought, like, transitioning into the scene worked well. Um, I wanted a little more um, from the creatures mm-hmm. um, and just getting a little bit more, um, like, different types of behaviors and hearing a little bit more intent behind the actions that they were doing. Yeah, yeah. One thing I got from the creatures. Um, let's just play a squeak full volume one time again, just because it it, it deserves not an encore performance. You know, let's go. <laughs> let's go full volume and play. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, claps for that one. Very good. Very good. <laughs> yeah. As far as the 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 walk inversions over here, my. My thoughts in the moment, the first time hearing this, Jeremy, was that I wanted a little more, um, like spatial contour, because it felt like we had these kind of cry outs and stuff, these these growls and snarls and so forth, but I wasn't sure like who was making the noise, and it felt like we were in a really reverberant space. And I guess like the tile walls and stuff, sure, it's going to be a pretty, pretty you know, sizzly space we're in. But I mean, I just want to have a little more as far as being able to tell who was doing the talking and being a VR game as well. Like the idea of, of like the spatial aspect of the sound being a, 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 a important element there. I'm just going to play this uh, really quick, uh, maybe from the end. I think it was like the, the hurling buckets and stuff was when I heard this the most. Let's go. At the very end, at the very end, we got that like really tight, kind of close, like, yeah. and it was at that point, I was like, oh, nice. I was, it feels a little more close and dangerous. But I mean, again, this is all just like my own, my own opinion, but the idea of, of, uh, of like adding more reverb to a sound, it, it tends to make it sound like l- maybe less dangerous because it's, it's further away or something. Right. And the, the idea of like the Metro clip, like you were saying in, in the last, the last one, Kristen, I think Brian as well, how like having more of a disparity between like being farther away and being close up is like helping to communicate that danger. So that very last, I mean, sadly the one that's, that's cut off, the like, yeah, that's cut off, I think was the the best indication of that. But um, right. I mean, I guess we have a little time left here. Brian, do you have any thoughts on half-life beyond that? Yeah, I really love the first part, the, you know, of course the squeak, but all the, the telemetry of the, the UI felt really good. I like that the added footsteps that you added, because um, the, the camera's obviously moving around. Um, I think the moment, the moment where the player picks up the, the gun can feel more important, because mm-hmm. uh, right now I felt all of the UI sound from coming from the left, but I didn't get a sense of like, 
almost like a like a satisfying you know the player has been harmed type sound yeah yeah totally yeah make him feel powerful okay and then moving on to finally the the more fun clip destroy all humans i guess it's not finally there's two more clips left uh yeah massive right turn here onto this game uh brian any thoughts here any notes so it was, it was pretty funny to watch it. I haven't played this game yet, but uh, the, the sense of style was there. It was really fun with the electricity and like the the humans. Like um, the one thing I would say though is I feel like just the clip. It was because it's so chaotic and the camera's moving around a lot. It definitely was a little bit. It, I felt I had trouble following along mm -hmm. exactly what was happening. Yeah, it's a good note. I mean, c compared to the Half Life Alex clip, Alex clip where yeah jeremy you've got this like very focused i mean it's vr right so we're very focused we're looking this way or we're looking this way it's very clear where the action is and where the attention is but yeah this is definitely the kind of clip where it's a bit it's not quite as like i i personally i, I love these clips where it's like this kind of um this contained mini story I mentioned in Jack's uh, anthem, it was anthem, I think, right? Where there's the the the, the lock on, the or the shooting, the lock on, and like the boost and the land and the walk up, get the thing. So we have this like big intense moment into this like smaller moment. It's got the movement. So it is like this story. Like we shot we shot the guys, we locked onto them, we blew them all up, and we walked over and got the thing. Like that's a story. Whereas the destroy all humans clip isn't really a story. It's like the middle of a story almost. And yeah, just due to the, the kind of nonstop action, it can be a little harder to find our footing, even right away. I'll press play here. And it's just like stuff happening so fast. The camera's whipping around. So you're not doing your doing your viewers any favors as far as being able to kind of weather that transition and then keep track of what's going on. You're just, it's just another risk you're taking as far as losing attention, that's all. Um, Kristen, do you have any Destroy All Humans thoughts? Yeah, I, I agree with everything y'all are saying. Um, I think the only thing I will say to add um, kind of a positive note on this scene was it really did give me a sense of um, like a wider breadth of style. Mm -hmm. Like I did take away from um, this that I was like, oh, well, you know, there's there's a dynamic range in the different types of things that um, we'd land on sound design style wise. Yeah, I mean, we're kind of ragging on you, Jeremy, for like, your stuff is too varied, but yeah, there's certainly a positive aspect to that as well. Uh, you know, we've seen reels that are, that are, for example, not focused in a mood, but focused in like a certain kind of industry space, like in the indie space. And we have like some um, moody Hollow Knight stuff into some like kind of bouncier Celeste stuff into like, uh, you know, like Subnaut like a game like Soma or something where it's like a way horror. And it's kind of clear like, oh, these are all like smaller-ish teams. And that can that can still be like focused as far as your goals while not being you know arguably focused in the style and showing you have you know a variety of chops can be certainly very positive and finally breath of the wild so uh we haven't talked about this at all i don't think but Kristen, do you have any opinions on like if there's anything you if, if there exists a piece that is maybe something you should shy away from for designing because a it's like uh too popular or, or overdone or it's like maybe too lofty a goal if it like won some awards for audio or that kind of thing well, i i do think it can be a risk right sure. um to because player like people who are listening your audience is going to have expectations um and so i think there's there's a risk of of doing something then so different that it doesn't meet the expectations of of what um the your listeners might have mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's for sure the biggest risk there. Just having, like, it doesn't sound like that. <laughs> that's, that's, of course, not the the, the response you want. Uh, but that aside, I mean, do you have any thoughts on the Breath of the Wild clip? And, I mean, just, you know, ex expectation aside? I wanted even more of the magical elements um, from this scene. Um, I thought some of the, the textures and everything that was there felt nice. I just like, again, wanted the magical elements to really pop out more. Mm -hmm. And finally, Brian, last thought here, if you have anything to add. Yeah, I, I really, I liked the, the moment where the, the doors swing open. There's like a, the sliding of the, the concrete, there's almost like a, a very pleasant tonal aspect to it. Mm -hmm. And I liked it because it was very much like, oh, you've opened up this tomb. and. Um, so I really like that moment. I do feel like the camp, so the, the ambience when it's close up fits, but then the camera pans back out. 
and it feels like the the ambience stays the same. So it'd be great to get that differentiation, especially when the camera then zooms back in when Link goes inside the the temple. Yeah, that that too was my thought, and it kind of it piggybacked off the the uh, the consideration for like spatial audio in the Half Life Alex clip. Because I had that note watching that first, then we got to here, and I was like, yeah, it's kind of the same sim- similar symptoms. Like we have this the the camera change or the idea of the thing is over there and things that are farther away have you know more more of a point source aspect to them. You can still make it stereo, just maybe not the whole the whole panorama. Like make it you know fifty percent left and right rather than hundred percent left and right. Um, yeah, it's certainly a, a consideration there. And yeah, fully agree on the door open or the 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 stone slide. I'm cranking this for a second. Very nice. Cool. It's real easy to go like too gritty or abrasive on that kind of thing. And yeah, gritty and abrasive is not the soundscape of Zelda. So nice work. Uh, okay, great. So I guess the, the very last thing to say, it's already 134. Sorry, guys. We have um, we have just a note. Do you think, um, Kristen, do you think that Jeremy Scott Olson is standing out in the crowd in a positive way currently? I think I would have um, shied away only from the fact that I I didn't I wouldn't have thought that the game space was the desired space. Um, but if I had dug in and listened to the reel, I think there's there's some um, things there that would have caught my ear and and piqued my interest. Hmm. And Brian. Yeah, I think it's 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 almost there. I feel like just trying to con- construct it in a way where um, you're almost. You're trying to tell, you know, a story with the, the listener, um, so then you can get them interested and bought in into what they're listening to. Mm-hmm. And I, 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 I like the the ending, like the Zelda part. I actually would go like, oh, if we need, you know, someone for interactables, this is like a. I actually, I was like, oh, this might be a person that we can talk to. Right. Yeah. I think just the the risk you're running, Jeremy, is just what Kristen's saying. Because I mean, for the for real talk, yes, we read the bio first. So we kind of get to know the person we're, we're looking at and stuff. But I think it's safe to say it's rare that the bio would be like the first thing people look at when there's a job posting. Because again, if you have hundreds of applications to go through, I mean, even Power Up, we're a, we're a tiny outfit compared to a team like Riot or something. But, you know, when we had a job posting, we had like 150 applications and that's still like a pretty large task for a small team to go through. And keep in mind, if you have a job posting up, it means that you are busy. So the idea of spending more time on the job application process is just not an easy pill to swallow. So generally people watch the reel first. And at that point, if they have a reason to care about you further, they will look at your bio. So right now your bio is like really strong and speaks to your, to like a wide breadth of expertise and experience. But with this reel, you're kind of risking them not seeing that part. So just be aware that, you know, just, just be really, really aware of the time people have and get those hooks in as fast as you can so that yes, people do follow up and you have this like this, the two of the one, two punch being your bio and like showing how, how damn experienced you are and you know, pray that they'll actually, they'll actually see that kind of thing. So yeah, I, I kind of agree that, I mean, you have a lot going for you, obviously a ton of experience. I think a little more focus and indication that you have a, uh, you know, a, an investment in the game space would be a good, a good next choice. I saw you saying maybe next step is a little more focus in your reel and such. And I think that's probably, probably a good call. So thanks so much, Jeremy. <laughs> Um, Kristen, please. Sorry, one quick note about the website. Um, I opened both websites on mobile, and the website um, it it orients differently. And so the links on the left are actually at the very bottom of the page, and I was having a really hard time finding out how to even navigate to the about or contact or um, any of those. So you only get the top links. So just as a heads up. There you go. Hot tips. All right. Well, uh, I guess before we bid you all farewell, we're at 137. Sorry, going over time here. There's just too much to talk about. So uh, I'll hand the floor off to you, um, Kristen, first, perhaps. Do you have anything else that you'd like to add as far as like if you can even talk about what is working on right now or if uh, you have anything else you want to just point the community in the direction of? Go for it. Um, I can't talk about anything we're working on right now, but... Um... I can say we actively recently hired someone, and so we've been putting in a lot of effort into um, looking at hiring practices and our like how to make audio hiring more equitable and inclusive. Um, and so we've recently made a lot of changes to um, being able to provide interview questions up front 
early, even before we get people in through the door. And um, we partnered with Pro Sound Effects to create a, a deal to do a limited license library that we were providing to all candidates. And I'm always interested if other people have ideas on um, ways to make hiring practices more equitable. So um, please feel free to reach out if you have ideas that you would love to share. Nice. The the pro sound effects, that's really cool. So to all candidates? So everyone applying gets like a limited yeah. term license kind of thing? Yeah. So everyone was working with the exact same source for um, doing the audio oh. test. And we created the audio test literally to be only a day's worth of work because we actively are trying to look at testing practices and ways to not crunch people before they get through the door. I love that. I know um, uh, Will, Will Roger was on a panel some time ago and mentioned audio being how game audio specifically in like the game industry space has a lot more of a uh, of like a financial gate to get through the, the idea of like all the I mean right now I have like all this hardware on my desk I have my MIDI keyboard I have all my sound libraries and VST plugins and so forth right it's a lot to get through so I, I love that the idea of saying hey here is here's your leg up that you might need to actually show us what you can do so cool um, okay, thanks so much. And Brian, do you have anything to add? I, I suspect you probably can't talk about what you're working on too, but we'll, I'll, I'll, I'll at least ask the question. Yeah, same same here. I can't talk about it. But um, <laughs> just wanted to thank you and thank everyone that's listening and watching for letting me be a part of this. Um, follow me on Twitter if you want to talk about video games, Star Wars, or RuPaul's Drag Race. I'm there. <laughs> Very nice. Okay, well, this one is for you two. Thank you so much. <laughs> And uh, I'll say as well, I'm not sure about, about you two, but if, if uh, Jeremy or Jack, you have any kind of follow-up questions, you want any, any clarifications, uh, yes, our Twitter is equally open, so feel free to, to follow up. I know Jack, you're emailing, so feel free to, to reply there if you have anything else to, to add. Or if you want to send a V2.0 in at some point, we always love seeing kind of follow-ups from people as well. So, uh, okay, thank you so much again, Kristen and Brian, and I guess I'll, uh, I'll let you go here. Yeah, thank you so much. Happy birthday. Oh, thanks. Okay. <laughs> cheers. I'm off. I'm off work. I'm done after this. So cheers. Okay, see you. Next. Okay. All right. That was killer. I was looking forward to that one for, for quite some time. Um, let's get some more Ben Prunty in your ears. More Far Less Alone. Let's go. Oh, it might get mad at me, though. It always does. It's like, oh, nice. It's buffering again. Nice. Uh, okay, great. So... Um, thank you, everyone, as always, for being in the chat and uh, and helping out, giving your own your own hot tips, hot takes, etc. It's always great to see. Uh, I saw someone earlier in the chat saying, "I love this healthy, like you know, supportive community and such." And I think that Game Audio really boasts a pretty unique community in that way. And I, I love uh, being able to kind of have this this uh, watering hole for all you to roll up and 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 chat and hang out and such. So thank you all for hanging out, and I guess I'll see you in two weeks. Yes? <laughs> okay, cheers. I'll see you soon.